Rabababata Baba, Malababata Baba, FCS Pray, Insouf Pray, College of Agri Pray, Let La Fia Pray through you. Ala Babo na Babo, Bada Babo na Tababa, Ababa la Baba na Babo, Araba da Baba na Baba Shkabai. Wala Baba te Babo na Taya, Aria Babe, Aria Babe la Baba na Ba. Bala Baba na Baba na Baba na Baba Shka, Eka Baba na Baba na Baba Shka Baba na Dia. Wala Baba na Baba. Allah Baba da Baba la Baba Ashka la Baba. You are my diet and my necessary food. Your presence is all I need, and I'm nothing without you. You are my diet and my necessary food. Your presence is all I need. And I'm not here without you. Oh, take me deeper, Lord. Oh, with you. Thank you, Jesus. Pray some more. Help me build intimacy. Build intimacy. Build intimacy. So help me build intimacy. Build intimacy. Build intimacy. With you. So help me build intimacy. Because you are my lover, my lover, oh, my lover, Holy Ghost, my lover, oh, you are my lover, my lover, oh, my lover, Holy Ghost, my lover, so help me build it to me, build it to me, build it to me, build it to me, oh, help me build it to me. Cause you are my lover, my lover, oh, my lover, oh, the ghost, my lover, oh, you are my lover, my lover, oh, 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 my lover, oh,
So much disadvantage except you step in. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are nothing without you. Help us, strengthen us, and empower us. Grant unto us access to your truth, unto us access to your life. Help us to become partakers of the very nature and your character. My Redeemer, walk with me. My Redeemer, walk with me. I am nothing without your presence. My Redeemer, walk with me. My Savior, walk with me. My Savior. Walk with me. I am nothing without your presence. My Savior, walk with my Redeemer, my Redeemer, walk with my Redeemer, my Redeemer, walk with me. I am nothing without your presence. I will be walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. I am nothing without. 
without your presence, we redeem our world. My redeemer, my redeemer, our my redeemer, my redeemer, walk with me. I am nothing without your presence. My redeemer, walk with me. My Savior, my Savior, walk with me. My into the court of God. There is always a protocol to enter into the very presence of God. Preaching has switched from talking to spirit administration. At any time you cannot administer spirit and life unto people, you are wasting their time. The most important person in a meeting is not the guest speaker, no. The most important person in a meeting is not the host. The most important person in the meeting is not even the general overseer. In fact, the most important person in the meeting is not an angel. The most important person in the meeting is God himself. And anytime we gather and God does not come, we gather in vain. And that is why anytime we come before the presence of God, we must be able to find a way to usher God. We must find a way to be able to host God and accommodate him. Because if God does not come, anything we are going to do here will be a show. I always say football club football centers have gathered enough for people there has never been a congregation large as a football club we will never come to a point where we have much people gather to watch football as they will gather to see Jesus why but let me tell you as powerful as the gathering of a football club is nobody gets saved Nobody gets healed. So people don't get healed, people don't get saved, people don't get transformed just because we gather. No. People get changed, people get transformed, people get healed because God is there. It is my desire that in the days when we will gather people like in a football club, God should be there. If not, what will we do? It will be a show and men will come back and return back the same. One of the greatest challenges of a minister is to come to a point where men do not see him but they see God. Because he cannot change the lives of men. Until God comes into the equation, men's life will remain the way it is. And that is why somebody can go to a football club with headache and return back with headache. He can go back to a football match with stomach ache and return back with a stomach ache. Nobody will say I'm healed. Nobody will say I'm delivered. Why? Because they didn't gather in the name of the Lord. At any time we gather and we are not gathering in the name of the Lord, then we gather in vain. Revival is not when one million of us gather together. No, we must gather in the name of the Lord. Revival is when one person comes to Jesus. Because so long as one person is revived, it's already a revival. So you see us spend time to be able to enter into a presence. It's because we know that God's presence can be everywhere. But his manifested presence must be hosted by men. It is true that God is everywhere. But the manifested presence of God that does business in the region is trapped by men. And if you pray inside of your house, you pray alone and God does not come. 
it is an evidence that even if I give you this microphone, there is no magic that will happen anywhere. My friend said something. If you can't pray here that we are corporate, I assure you if you go back home, you can't pray. Because the strength of your corporate is actually part of what you do privately. And if you are weak in your corporate, it means you are weak in great place. You must take advantage of this private, the corporate gathering as such as this, so that you can be able to rebuild your skin. See, as iron sharpened iron, so is the countenance of one sharpened by another. Well, the strange part of this is that the same way one can make you hot, it's also possible for somebody to make you cold. It's possible. We must come to a point where we walk with the Lord walk with the Lord we walk with the Lord he says his name shall be called Emmanuel God is God with you the secret to success in life is God walking with you it's to be guaranteed that in the midst of every situation God is there if God is in that situation don't worry but if God is not there chaos and confusion will abound I trust God that this night, within the few moments that I have, God is going to help us to be able to drive again. Please, can you give the Lord a shout? FCS, give the Lord a shout. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me around again. Please, um, I have a special love in my heart for each and every one of you. It is my desire that today you get transformed again. Um, can you just welcome your neighbor? Smile. Just smile at them. You may be smiling to your husband or to your wife-to-be. Why do Christians always don't like to marry from church? Who do you want to marry before? The same person that you are praying together and getting transformed together is it's very easy. Eh? You prefer somebody that will come and speak mass and speak English and speak French and explain to you where it's coming from. This one, you know this one. That is from FCS. Eh? Um, please, can you help me appreciate the chairman of the chapel. Thank you so much for coming, sir. Thank you so, so much. It's a rare privilege having me around. He's the chairman of the chapel of grace here. Latvia. Also help me appreciate your patron. Thank you so much, sir, for having me around. Also your president and other executive of the FCS. Thank you so, so much. Also my beloved mom and dad are also up back there. Thank you so much for having me around. Also, my beloved friends, Apostle Paul and Apostle uh, Jonathan, all around. I mean, it was so amazing. Also, help me appreciate yourselves. Galatians 3. Can it be projected? Help us appreciate our media mama. Media mama has been doing so much work. She needs to be appreciated. Some of you, if you stand by that computer, you'll be scared. Our elder was telling, us, elder was telling us that he designed a software. You don't know how hard these things are. Try to design one, you'll be confused. So when you see people stand by computer, know that they are doing a great work. Some of you, you don't know how to do anything apart from to go and WhatsApp. I know you know where I'm going to. <laughs> uh, you know, we are in a revival conference. And I told you that anytime a man begins with God, he must have a plan to survive. If you don't have a surviving and a lasting plan, you're already doomed. The people that will remain in the next 10 years are not people that are part of us, are people that have a plan when all of us are not planning of how to survive. The Bible spoke about the parable of the ten virgins five were wise, five were foolish the only foolishness and the wisdom and the difference is that one, the other five have a plan the other ones don't 
The other ones knew that oil can finish. The other one don't know that oil can finish. I wonder why there was no miracle for them. But it came to pass when the oil has finished. How many of you have seen Millennial Development Goal? Have you heard about the word before? Millennial Development Goal. Does it still exist again? I don't think so. What is now existing? SDG, Sustainable Development Goal. Many years ago, the government felt they can have a plan that can exist for a millennia. They call it Millennial Development Goal. What Millennial Development Goal this is, means that they will do a project that can last for, is it 1,000 years? Ah. And I don't know who gave them the advice. And the project they felt they should do is to do a boho, tuka tuka. And to them, that's Millennial Development Goal. So they came to our villages and do tuka tuka. And after we used that tuka tuka for three months, the team break. It didn't last for even one year, talk less than 1,000 years. So most of the projects that were done by Millennial Development Goal end up not even lasting the first one year. And they discovered they were all jokers. And if they have any plan to do a project that will last forever, they must change their protocol of engagement. So they shift from Millennial Development Goal to what we call Sustainable Development Goal. And the goal of Sustainable Development Goal is to ensure that they have a project that is not lasting for 1,000 years, but a project that is what? Sustainable. So what do you think a project that can, are sustainable? They began to move to youth empowerment. They began to move to all these kind of scholarship programs. They began to move to many, um, capacity building. So they are sure that it empower one youth, the youth can last for long and he can be sustained if they give somebody a scholarship the person can go to us eh, or go to a school and now finish later and now become maybe a professor that is still sustainable they gather people and they begin to do empowerment ict they do computer training centers and all of those things i get what i'm saying now so now they have a project that is sustainable and not just something that will last a millennia Sometimes we have a plan for the next 100 years and yet we have not planned for the next one year. A man that planned for 100 years and didn't plan for one year may not last long. Have you seen people that carry all their money? All plus what we call, that's what we call cash flow. You no know what's cash flow in business? You can be a billionaire in business and a zillionaire in your house. When you see a man begging, it's not because he doesn't have money. He doesn't have what we call cash flow. Because at that man is he can sell his car, sell his land, sell something. If he has a house worth millions, but he doesn't have 1,000 in his account to eat for that day. I get my point now. So the wisdom there is to have what we call cash flow. Cash flow is the amount of money required to regulate your life first before you think of investing in business. Because by the time you carry money for cash flow and put in business, you end up not having what to eat and hunger we always take Israel back to Egypt. So you find yourself, although a man with much, but yet again you go, not because you don't have, mind you, it's because you don't have cash flow. The same way, sustainable development goal has a plan for the now and a plan for the future. Millennial development goal only have a plan for the future and doesn't have a plan for the now. Sorry, only have a plan for the future, yes, and does have a plan for the now. I hope you are not even confused. I'm driving to somewhere. We are going to somewhere. Revival has been part of the talk of our time. But let me tell you the truth. Revival is not a new thing. It has been happening before you were born. You if and go back to heaven, it will be happening. Can you count the number of revival that has happened over time? You can't. There are so many of them. 
every time whether on campus or in anywhere you see people born on fire while i was in abu campus many years ago i went there around 2008 9. chris devon used to smoke and drink there's one man that started this chant oh, 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 oh. He's from Kagodoku, one man from Kaduna like that. Is it Kagarko they call that place or Kadarko? Kagarko, but that place that you have that uh, one and theology school, something like that. Seminary. Kaguru, yes. Chris Devan has went all around the world just because of that. Ooh. Ooh. He just begin to cry. He was the one that bring all this chanting before all this. All these our friends carry it and now he's everywhere. An old man started chanting before children pick it. He came to a point, he said that it's a point you begin to pray. You come to a point where you can no longer pray. Then you enter into groaning. And that was a strong prayer. That guy used to smoke and drink in Zaria. He was in political science department. He was in my school, A.B. Zaria. People that were praying for him to be born again. Revival! Then they used to bring them mama and shatter. How many of you? Only our fathers, you know, mama and shatter. Mama and shatter them from those casinos and the red. They will bring them, they will come up and singing those their song with those their. So all our theater were used for kind of things. When men like Chris Dev and God born again, they say it's a lie. We must use that theater for Christianity. When he was. When he got born again, he met the guys praying for him. They say you came late because while we pray, the Lord told us he'll be born again and you start a revival in Zaria. He said, ah, now that I'm born again, what next? He said, well, continue to burn and bring others into the body. So he went about the same passion he had to do carnatics. He went about revealing Jesus. Traveling from everywhere around the world just so that he can bring another level of groaning and sounds to the body of Christ. We know songs to have syllables, to have lyrics until Chris Devan rose. When Chris Devan rose, songs don't need to have lyrics again. Somebody can start say, yeah, lele, 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 and the song. That's what I'm saying. So it now become more of spirit and life rather than articulate words. Revival brings us to a point where we come to the end of the then we begin to desire the help of God. And from the strength of the help of God, we begin to give expression to the possibility of God that is strange to a mere moment. But let me tell you, what happened to Chris Devon was not a new thing. There is a woman referred to as Maria Woodward Ita. Maria Woodward Ita, it was said in our meetings, that when you come to Maria Woodward Ita meeting, you will not hear her preach so much. Rather, you will just come and see her crying and groaning. As she's crying and groaning, men are caught up into the spirit. And as they are caught up into the spirit, they are having encounters. Some of them are going to hell. Some are going to heaven. Some are seeing angels. Then you see people naturally lying down and crying without anybody laying hands on them. Maria would want Ita was such a woman that carried so much of the presence of God. And anytime she come and begin to cry, the presence of God will envelop the atmosphere. And she will begin to sing some songs and sound that people cannot be able to understand. But men are caught up into diverse levels of encounters. But mind you, Maria would not eat and leave this life and it came to a point it ended. So what we saw happening in Zadia with Chris Deva didn't begin with him. It began somewhere. Paul, according to scripture in the book of Romans 8, himself spoke about how that the Holy Ghost helped our infirmity to pray because we don't know how to how we should pray with a groaning that we cannot be able to utter. It then means that he has experienced it before. And I'm trying to let you understand that I knew the word revival may look it's an ancient word. So the problem with revival is not the revival, it's sustaining the revival. The challenge we have in our time is not a revival coming. It's we being able to either maintain the revival or sustain the revival. Because revivals are not sustained. And most times people that begin the revival have a very terrible ending. And while I study revivals, I discover that devil is very interested in attacking revival. Very interested. 
many of those people that we are revived during the time of them Chris Devon I didn't know where they are I knew only him and some few of them rose before Chris Devon came and began to mentor another set of people which is them Chintok them Tende then before a revival happened and launched them Salman Chintok Tende Babs Ubanduma and quite some many guys like that many of those men in Zaria and they became apostolic and prophetic and pastoral voices but when that revival was bettered out many of them survive only few that you see i mentioned their name and some few survive many other ones after that move of the spirit happened many of them reign for a while they died and while they were still reigning another revival happened that bettered some of us when that revival hit our campus every campus have this year i'm telling you a time is going to come there will be a hunger in the heart of people there will be a fire burning something will happen that you see people praying everywhere that thing doesn't used to last everybody that is wise must take advantage of that time and go deeper and build strength and build stamina why because every day may not be christmas When that revival came, he looked as though heaven is closer to the earth. You pray small, not here. At that time, everybody is more focused on seeking God, pursuing God, reading books, having time of fellowship. One night vigil to another night vigil. And we are not tired because we enjoy it. When school go on break, we will remain in school. A whole semester, a whole session, I will just remain. What we are doing is just keep on praying and fasting and reading books. Every day we go to the bush, we pray. Every day, every day. It was a number of us. It was a revival. But that thing didn't last for long. Many people were equipped and built and trained for a while. Some fail. Just like the way you see when army, army don't recruit all the time. Do you realize that? that army announced for recruit. And if you must be a soldier, you must apply that time that they apply for the good. They, 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 they announce for recruitment. In case you refuse to apply, you have to wait for another session. You can't just wake up and say, because I want to go to soldier. You just go and put your name. It's a lie. There is a time that they announce for recruitment. And if you want to be a soldier, you must apply. The same way with even this your school. You don't just decide to get admission anytime. There is a time they advertise for admission. And anybody that is interested must buy a form and come and do an exam or something like that. You can't just wake up and say, today, I'm in, I'm a student. Today, I'm in NDDs. Today, I'm in level Ds. You are a liar. They advertise, then you apply. If you refuse to apply, you have to wait for another session. It is the same way that even in the spirit, anytime God advertises an open door, is what we call a revival. Revival is when God advertised the need and the necessity for men that he can use. There are times when God is looking for men. In the days when God is desperately looking for men, it's the days of revival. At that time, God will paraventure try to walk upon everybody. Even men like Saul, as they were kind of God will reach out to them to try them and see. In revival time, God leave the church. He go outside of the church to look for people. That will it. You say, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You say, who will go for us? You say, who will I send? But like I told you, the problem is not the revival. There are countless revival movements that has happened. You hear about the Azusa Street revival, the Welsh Art Party, the Healing Art Party, the Todd Bentley revival. You hear about the Toronto Blessing. You hear about all kinds of revival. Do you know most time when you read God's generals, you see all of them are from the Western nation. Is that true? It then means that Christianity was passed down to us from those regions. That means they must have had a revival for Christianity to reach our place, place, right? But do you know that everything that happened in the Europe and in America, all the revival they have has gone. Today, America look as though their nation don't even know God at all. What happened? And these were nations where their fathers see Jesus. This were a region where it was from them that the Christianity was passed down to us. Africa was the center of idolatry and witchcraft, but today 
we have become the center of prayer what happened then what happened to the fallen nations today it become a crime to mention jesus in us in a classroom that they are okay to say a guy should marry a guy a lady should marry a lady how did they get there revival happened yet again he died when you go to their churches abroad you hardly see youth like this see the way we are normally we are plenty here if you go to abroad you hardly see a church that you have youth like this only old men that have seen jesus before they are still waiting till they die that's why all of them come to africa to do programs why their own people they hardly believe in the gospel hardly you find so much so much people that don't believe in god as foreign people the western nation had revival what happened to the revival devil has always been an inhibitor of revival every move of the spirit the devil come to inhibit it when god is doing a thing devil will try to do another thing anytime god establishes church the devil will try to establish a chapel what i mean by a chapel he will establish a parallel government so that he can shut down what god is doing So all the outpouring that happened, whether the Azusa Street Revival, whether the healing outpouring and all of them, most of them happened and died. And some of them died very worse. Whether the healing outpouring, the prophetic outpouring, the healing, the um, evangelistic outpouring. Where, what, where are the people that were revived under Theon Osborne, under people like them, Speed Wigo Sword, under people like them, uh, Catherine Kuma, Amy Zembofasi, under people like them. Um, there are so many of them. You read God's generous, you saw what happened. Where are those people? All of those people of the Spirit ended, and all of them partially dead. Some of them lived for a while, and after they died, their children could not continue the legacy, the, 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 the heritage. There is an issue in keeping to the Bible. You can also be able to reckon to the same thing in Nigeria. There is no church that is orthodox. Every church begins as a, move, a revival. Every church began as a move of the spirit. Don't deceive yourself. When you look at here, I'm from ERCC Church. My grandfather, we are part of the first, first founding fathers. My father is here, thank God. They were part of the first people that the white men trained in Moria Conference. That's where he even died. I think they buried him there. Nigeria. He was a reverend. Those men that time were on fire for God. Refire is not this joke we are doing now. You think you can establish a church or begin something just being a joker? Nobody will believe you. There must be a spirituality attached to it. Every church you see that look orthodox today began as a fire. Began as fire. I'm not joking. All them Babalola, when you go back to their church today, there is no fire like that. I went to see a sinner. No more prayer. Where is the prayer that Babalola pray? It, it lost. Where was the revival that better those men? When the man did and died, everybody was light. Now you go to those churches, they hardly pray. I just came back from Lagos. I was in Bensidaosa church. I said, where? Bensidaosa was to be a man of prayer. Bensidaosa was the father of Africa. He was the one that disciple almost everybody that you see that is doing anything today. It was Bensidaosa. Him to catch the fire. And when he went abroad for school of ministry, he did not graduate. Because the fire was too much. He said, I cannot be sitting here eh? and Africans will be dying. He said, send me back home. Let me come and help Africans. So they felt that God, you have graduated. They said, God has already graduated me. What made Bessidao so strong was not the school of ministry. It was the fire of God. There is the school of the spirit. There is the school of ministry. Eh? If the school of ministry does not bring you to have a school in the spirit, you will have a challenge. Because Bible school don't make man. It's God that make man. Men are mixed in caves and secret places. And those places sometimes are too secret that normal men can't understand. If I also was together in a classroom like this with many people, God in this classroom in the school of ministry. As others are doing normally, when I finish, I will go open church. He was fire, he was crying, he was burning. See, there is fire in my bones. 
See, I can't stay here and Africans are dying. Because anytime you hear the news of witchcraft, the news of killing, say, let them graduate me, let me come back home. That's how they graduate. Only him, they gather and they graduate. Have you ever seen a Bible school that graduate one student? He the also was a strange man. Only him, they graduate. Why? Because when revival is about to be better, he doesn't follow the normal protocol. Revival break every protocol. Every protocol is broken for a revival. And suddenly, man like Idawosa, immediately when he landed in Bini City, everybody is shaking. He went under their power of the God. Everybody, because he came with fire. From that very moment, he began to move from one village to another village, casting out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead. It was evident that God has came into Bini. Then from Bini all through Nigeria, it became a wildfire. And everybody in the times of Idaosa that refused to connect to Idaosa became irrelevant. That was how he discipled men like them uh, Archbishop Duncan Williams, them Michael Konko, them, them Paul, what they call it, Johnson Suleiman, them all these people. They passed through one man. But why? Because one man caught a fire of revival. It then means that if only you can carry something, eh, the whole of Africa can rest upon you. Imagine never rise. In the days of Babalola, Babalola lived before Idaosa. I still, I was still alive when Idaosa was alive. But I didn't see Babalola. In the days of Babalola, it was said that it was arguable whether Babalola was called or not called. Until one day he went upon the mountain top and he encountered the Lord. And they, according to history, they say Babalola, an angel appeared to him right and gave him a yam. He said, This yam is the yam that is meant for the whole ministers. But they refused to eat it. You alone eat it. And a bell was given to him by an angel. He said, this bell is the bell of signs and wonders. Anytime you go, you ring that bell, signs and wonders will happen. He was a strange man. Where he used to go to the rock to pray, he said the rock went down because he stayed there. But Allah is a man that when he start praying now, before we stop, it's in the next two days. If you say pray for food, when you start praying for food, it's in the next 10 hours. I say, if I'm there, I'll finish eating, I'll go and sleep. <laughs> we will do our prayer. We pray, 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 pray. I will not give, pray, I will not give. Somebody come and tap and say, Apostle, it's only you that God call you. <laughs> Once the prayer point has finished. <laughs> One say no grace again. One say no utterance again. God save me the day you follow us for SBI retreat, you know. <laughs> God. Baba Lola, we pray and pray. But this is the thing that better revival. No, this is the thing that better revival. If Baba Lola never prayed, his life would have been like other people. I would not mention his name today. Why? There are too many people in the West. Why am I mentioning Baba Lola? Because he prayed. It was said that any region Babalola went to, fire fall. Literally, fire come. He can come and stand and say, Okay, which is a wizard? Kill me. If you can't kill me, I give you three minutes. They will do, do, do. If they can't kill you, say, Why? He will stand up. He will call fire. He will burn them and burn their shrine. He will go to another one again. He will go to his shrine and say, Babala, uh, Babala, Babala. No, his name looks like Babalao too. Babalola, Babalao. Babalao, kill me. If you can't kill me, I will kill you. He, will, he shut down every region there. And paraventure, if the witches and wizards gather together, he will ring the bell. When you do, baga, just know that we are finished. Every CAC church has a bell. Only Babalola on his original. I don't know where they got their own. But his own was the one, an angel. An angel gave it to him. The day he died, I believe that bell disappeared. Because nobody can carry that bell. Because nobody is willing not to sleep. Nobody is willing not to eat food. The price men paid for the revival are not normal price. Check every pioneer of any revival. They don't have a normal life. Maria would eat her family is a challenge. Catherine Kuma can't even have a boyfriend. Baba Lola today, you know, family in Awala. There are only few of them that try and manage to have a balanced life. It's very hard. Because when spirit possesses you, they manipulate everything that concerns you. 
There's a reason why Paul in scripture eh, said that marriage is a distraction. Why? Because if God will not help you, the day you begin to marry, after many things happen, that it's not as if it's bad, but you just discover that certain fire begin to go down a little bit. So I don't know which wisdom we can be able to put to ensure that we maintain this thing. I went for a very big meeting in the East. One of the meetings that all their pastors gather in the East. A very big meeting. That meeting, the last person they invited was Omar Okpaya and the most smart to go and all this, David Ogoeli. After I spoke on fire, one of those bishops looked at me and said, Kai, that he used to be on fire like this. But he looked at his wife and said, Kai, 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 Kai. That when he saw me, he was just, he just remembered where he used to be. But the funny thing that he now says is that he not, when it's his own session, a bishop, when he's social, he now took the mic, he said, Ibu should not mind that small boy. He said, it's because he's not married. So when he's married, he will stop saying all of these prayer, prayer things. <laughs> Thank God, the other bishop begin to defend me. He said, don't, why are we say like that? Why are you praying for him like that? That you, you did not pray after, you stop praying after he married. Doesn't mean that he will do like that. I left them and I went away. See, it is true that it's possible for the revival not to tarry. That fire of God you are feeling in your life, it is possible for you not to be sustained. That is very possible. Because everything that we do that brings revival, we must continue to do it to sustain the revival. If we pray and revival come, we will keep on praying to maintain revival. Because every move of God eh, is proceeded by prayer, operated by prayer, sustained by prayer and maintained by prayer anything we used to do that bring it if we stop doing it we stop and you know it's challenging but sometimes people will come and start advising to stop because everybody gets tired at the tell end <laughs> because revival are things that only God does that's why today CAC is hard for them to go back to what Babalola is to do we are asking them can we go back to the days of Elijah, days of Abadola, days of Idaosa? Those days will never come again. Those days are gone. Why? Because the reason why it will never come is because there are no Idaosa now. There are no Babalola now. There are no Elijah now. But when we are asking for the God of Elijah, the God of Elijah is asking for the Elijah of our time. The problem is not whether it cannot be done. It's that the Elijah, men that were willing to give their life to it, are no longer available. In those days, them T.L. Osborne, them all these people, they, they do meetings and stay for weeks. Some of time for months, just so that they can host God. We, we only did three hours, two hours, and we go to sleep. And we want revival. You now see that the revival is very far. And when we go back home, we continue watching movie. We don't see the need to cry to God. Revival will remain a cliche. So the challenge is sustaining the revival and what happened it then means that Emmanuel has been lost and we cannot lay hold of it and that is why we have not laid of it that, that is why it's hard it also we are men that herald revival in Africa preach to more white than blacks but yet again we cannot find their heritage the challenge is we have Organize ourselves and now we have what we call a legacy instead of the heritage If we must be able to sustain the Bible, we must go after the heritage and not the legacy the heritage Is the inheritance the legacy are the things that they did that was recorded We don't only need the legacy, but we need the heritage Let me tell you if we must sustain revival, we must go back and look for what we call the ancient path. What was the path that these men walk upon? What did they do that we are not doing? What was the covenant they initiated with God? Abraham had covenant with God. If Isaac forget that covenant, Isaac would have suffered. Isaac went back to the covenant of Abraham. Then Isaac, then Jacob also sit upon the covenant of Isaac. This is what we call the heritage and the inheritance. That is what we call Asian landmarks. We must be able to return back to all those Asian landmarks and trace back from where we are coming from. 
the same way that is possible for you in your lineage eh? it's possible that your lineage that your grandfather served an idol and he was designed to be the one to inherit the idol and now you want to be a pastor you don't know why as a pastor you've been seeing yourself and idol will come and say you belong to me it's because it's an inheritance it's part of your lot and portion while I begin to journey in God, I begin to encounter a lot of idols. While I break the idols, I begin to encounter the heritage of the fathers. It didn't take me long to discover my dad called as an apostle. And I continue from where he, what God gave him. And I realized his father was called as an evangelist. I have never seen his father picture. But I have seen the father in the spirit. He appeared to me and he released impartation upon me. I didn't only meet idols. No, there is also spiritual inheritance for you. Every generational cause also has generational blessings. You are just concerned about the cause. What about the blessing? There is also a blessing in your generation. If you journey so much in God, you will meet the heritage and the inheritance of the blessing. But eventually, you didn't meet it. The Bible says, I have called Abraham your father and Sarah your mother. Look unto them. There is a covenant upon Abraham and Sarah that guarantee the abundance and the supply of God. As much as there is a covenant that somebody has made with a deity that make you today an idol will say you belong to me. One of those my dear people that follow me they invited me to worry. As I don't flee into worry, their father died and their father they want to continue their idol. I have never seen an idol that much. A very, very plenty. Their father is a major priest. Plenty like this. All kinds of antiquity. You see, if they burn it, people will die. That I say, uh huh. I'm the breaker of idol. Ban Parazim is here. I gather all of them, set them on fire. They burned. But before we burn them, we pray for like almost five hours. <laughs> Let me tell you, because sometimes when you see a charm that are alive, you know. One man that gathered them and born like that in the east, and as I'm talking to you now, he's dead. But that thing came back first week, they struck him dead. Next week, dumb. Another week, blind. Another week, can't walk again. He died. We prayed and prayed, then we burn it. The ones that refused to burn, we break them. Somebody came and began to cry. I went and carried by wine, and he's pouring the grave that he want to appease the spirit of the man so that the man will not come and fight him. I said, please, can somebody go and um, put fire in the grave so that the man will get angry the more? Let the spirit come. I like the spirit where it's angry the more. As much as there are causes in your family, there are blessings in your family. The first time I went to my mom's village, I think I went there with Paul too. Is it PAD? They call it PAD. <laughs> As I opened my mouth to pray in tongues, a spirit slapped me. Ah! I said, you don't pray here. I said, eh? You see, gone people are serious. I thought it's only Kolo people that have idols. I never know that you're gone have idols. My dad is from Kagbo. I've never, I think, have I been there any once? I don't know. I don't know how people, I hear that they used to move like fire at night and in the daytime. I want to go there. The one I see, PAD is enough. Me and my friend, we went there. We went and stood in grave. After we were done praying, gada, gada, gada. <laughs> you don't want to know the story. The way those spirits dealt with us. Kai! As we were coming, pa, something will come out from the sky and carry the bike and hit us. Pa! I said, we we'll go reach us at all. He came to the point, we said, let's start drinking, kawai. We fell and fell. I broke my hand, broke my word. He broke his foot. Ah! Just because we went and played against some idols, we went and did deliver. The one day we went to Budum Budum, one place they call Budum Budum. <laughs> After we did the deliverance, those people want to kill us. You see, it's power sari. The money power sari, but what is more is the power of God. But if you don't have the power of God, devil will be very strong. There may be idols in your father's house. Uh, 
Eh? Oh, they call it idols. Ah, <laughs> we have to start playing. You know? The one of my friends was praying, bah, 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 his spirit is slapping. Bah! of the things we have today are legacy legacy is actually the building you know most of these churches now have the building that the father has built they have the university they have the cars the house the good building is what we call legacy but as good as a legacy is you need the inheritance you need the heritage the heritage is the spiritual infrastructure as a man to that somebody need to inherit to continue from where the father stopped but that is what we are us, and now we have a heritage. So now we have a legacy. If we must stay in we must go after the heritage. And most times, why the Bible fail is because we neglect the ancient landmarks. And sometimes men lost their concentration. Other times it's because we lack consistent prayer. Other times it's because of the ignorance of what is made available to us. And other times it's because of sin, iniquity, and transgression. And most times it's because of what we call the negligence of the secret place. The same way God appeared to you is the same way he will appear to your generation. You must take them to the way that God appeared to you. I always say our fathers have lied to us. They told us the, ministry, the secret ministry is stage light. I should have stage light. And have a good computer system. And this is a lie. That was not how they started. They started in bush caves. Most of them started in their room. In fact, they started under a mango tree. There was fire. The fire of God was what I upon my head. What is the, the West leader said? I set myself on fire and people gathered to see me born. They drove him away. Don't pray here. He went to his father's graveyard and people gathered in the father's graveyard. The secret to ministry is not to have a good heart carry fire. People will gather. The world today has never been able to neglect people that are born. It's a lie. If I go out here now and set myself on fire, I mean even physical fire, I just carry fire, I burn myself. People will gather outside to see what is going on. In the same way, when you set yourself to burn spiritually, men will gather to watch you burn. The Bible is when men begin to burn for God. Also, why we cannot sustain revival is because there is an exchange of ordination and a selling of birthright. Many people sell their birthright. Many people sell their birthright. Many sell their birthright. Many exchange their ordination. Many. Now is the time I would love to read my scripture and it seems as though the projector is not yet come up. Go with me to the book of Galatians 3. Are we there? Or should we give you some few minutes? Okay. Revival will always remain a story until you and I rise to begin to pray. When we rise to begin to pray, a generation will be salvaged from the bondage of corruption. When we rise to begin to pray, a generation will be brought into limelight again. This is the reason why revival failed also. One of the most important reasons. This is Paul speaking to the Galatians church. The Galatians church is one of the most balanced church. Just as Ephesus was the highest, then the Corinthians, the Galatians also are perfect. Bible says, oh foolish Galatians, who have built you? 
that you should not obey the truth before whom I, Jesus Christ, had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Go further. He said, This only will I learn of you. Receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Go on. He said, Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect in the flesh? Have you suffered many things in vain? If ye be in vain. But you have the context now. The Galatian church were part of the church that labor in God to a point where they become very spiritual. But when they became very spiritual, they walked in the spirit for a while. They were revived for a while. And now they now went back to the flesh. And Paul came and began to rebuke them. Among the many churches I begin to work with, the Galatian church was the only church that did not start from the flesh. No. Paul met them as a very spiritual church. Most times when Paul come to a church, he meet them kind of, he begin to teach them how to grow in God. But the Galatian church, he met them on fire. So he said, oh foolish Galatians, how can you begin in the spirit and now you end in the flesh? People begin in the flesh and enter spirit. You, you begin in the spirit and you enter flesh. That means a time can come in the life of a believer, he can be bewitched. And because of that bewitchment, eh, you can enter the flesh. There's a man called John, is it John what? Is it John Knock? That man began in the spirit. A woman came and bewitched him. A woman came and cornered him to a house. And she said, sit down here. You sit down, sleep here, sleep. When I wake up, eat today, eat. Then she he told her, begin to write another publication against everything you said. So John, John Knox, he began to write and say that everything is a lie. That all the revival is a lie. All the Holy Ghost is a lie. All the healing is a lie. It's just his imagination. Oh foolish Galatians, who are bewitched you? How can you begin in your spirit and you end in the flesh? And the problem of the flesh is that you don't just end there. You are now made perfect in the flesh. Perfect by the flesh. Somebody can begin in the spirit and never be perfect in the spirit. But when you enter flesh, perfection enter normal. The flesh does not take time to be perfected. In fact, the flesh does not need an educational system. The flesh can educate itself. To walk in the spirit to take time. The flesh, no, they take time. If today you walk in the flesh, you are gone. See, the flesh do many signs and wonders. It took me time to realize that. That my flesh can do things that will shock me. Have you done something and you wonder, Kai, now me they do this thing. No, now your flesh. No matter how spiritual you are, your flesh is not born again. I trust my spirit, I don't trust my flesh. You don't know what your flesh can do. Oh, choir master. It will shock you what your choir master with your tongues and your lips will do. A man can be walking in the spirit 99.999% in the spirit. That 0.001% in the flesh can do more wonders than that 99.99% in the flesh, in the spirit. I'm telling you. The flesh can do many signs and wonders. And that is why when you begin to walk in the spirit, you must remain there. Never there to look back. If not, you'll be made perfect in the flesh. Somebody say, ah, the way you are too spiritual. Like this, you are not even romantic. You are not even being kind of small. I will even know whether you can even make your wife happy. I say, I don't need to know. The flesh don't need to be educated. In fact, how will I even know now? Without walking in the flesh. You see, it's bewitchment that is coming. Bewitchment. You are too spiritual. Be romantic a little bit. What they mean by being romantic is to be carnal, is to walk in the flesh. And that one percent will shock you. It go shock you. It go shock you. Oh, prayer warrior, it go shock you. Oh, choir mistress, it go shock you. It was that one percent that made them pregnant. You can see a lady that has never slept with anybody before. There are people that have been processed. They have been a shower. They have a they have their own, have their own room. Nobody knows they they pregnant. They come church, can't give offering. You maybe cry a muster zero point zero 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 one percent. Where you try, there you go. And people will now begin to think that that's how you have been for the whole of your life. The flesh is terrible. Don't begin in the spirit and end in the flesh. People begin in the flesh and end in the spirit. You you begin for spirit. You can't go flesh. 
all foolish Galatians. The problem with revival is that men end up in the flesh. Anytime you begin to accommodate the flesh, you are gone. But the flesh will always be part of you. So you fight it. Every day you fight it. You fight it. Because the desires will come. There are days you feel like sleeping with a guy. Say not lie. I did here. There are days you feel like masturbating. Say I know good one. There are days you feel like watching pornography. Say I know the do there are days you feel like stealing somebody for say I don't go do it. How many of us, if you see this phone here, I forget this phone here, you will carry it and call me and give me. You will speak it down and put it in your pocket if you don't even sell it tomorrow. You now see why the flesh is powerful. With all the tongues, maybe you didn't come here and cry during the impartation session, but you still carry it and put it in your pocket. It's an apostle, he has many phones. You have been bewitched. You began in the spirit, you are ending in the flesh. The flesh will always fight against your consecration in the spirit. It's a challenge of the Bible. Let me find the launching part. In the days and times of revival, men are launched out into their callings. There are four types of apostles according to scripture. Ephesians chapter 4. I don't think I will go there. Or oh, Act 13. Let's start with Act 13. One. The Bible says, Now there was that we are in the church that we are at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simon, that was called Niger. And Lucius of Cyrene and Manea, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrite and Saul. Go. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they have fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So, so them being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed into Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyrus. What I'm trying to say is that in a certain church in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, right? While they were ministering to the Lord, while they were ministering and praying, the Holy Ghost spoke. Say, Pray unto me, Barnabas and Saul. Work that I have for them. It means that there was a time when people gathered and they began to pray. A revival happened, and God began to demand that men were separated. What does it mean? In a revival, God began to what? Ordain men. In the revival, God begins to appoint men. In the revival, God begins to select men and give them work. He says, select unto me Barnabas and Paul for the work that I have for them. So, in the revival, revival used to work bad ministries, revival bad churches, revival bad apostles, bad prophets, bad teachers, bad evangelists. Everybody you see today that is either a prophet, a prophet is a product of a revival. There was a move of the spirit that entered them. But mind you, if you study this scripture very well, when you go to discover that Barnabas and Saul that God put together at the day they didn't end up together. Is that not true? A time came, they begin to have issues. Barnabas was the one that even helped Saul very well. But later on, a time came, they had a little issue in keeping to John Mark. And Saul took Barnabas took who? John Mark, right? Saul, Paul, Lamb took Silas. And all of them went their ways. At the tail end, it was said that John Mark came back. I don't know what happened to Barnabas, whether he succeeded or he failed, but John Mark came back looking for how to work with Paul again. And Paul took him as a deacon. In every revival movement, men are better to do the work of God. But if you discover, you realize that there are what we call the, the apostles. Apostles are messengers of God, people that God sent to do his work. It doesn't matter whether a pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist, what apostle can also be in office, but can also be a job as a messenger, as a sent one. So we can refer to the chairman of this chapel as the apostle of this chapel. Yes. We can refer to as the patron as the apostle over FCS. It's true. An apostle is a messenger sent with a message to a region. It doesn't have to be a title. Is that okay now? So in the revivals, men are sent with a mandate to go execute the counsel of God. But before they are sent, oftentimes 
There is a calling. God call people, God choose people, and God send them. Say those who he call, he what? He justify before he glorify. So no matter how you do within the revival time, is when God will do the calling, the justification before he does the glorification. Is that okay now? Then you will begin to realize that God does some few things upon them. Within those process of justification, he added to people what we call the credentials. That's what is referred to as the credential of a messenger. Anybody that God will send as a messenger has certain credentials as a token for empowerment for him to be able to do the work in him. So the goal of revival meeting is to bring you to a point where you are empowered with a credential, with a token to be able to do the representation. The same way when you train a soldier later on you give him a weapon. Is that okay now? The weapon you are giving is to empower him to be able to guard and mount his gate. The same way when God is done training you what he does, he empowers you. And part of this empowerment is what we call the credentials required for a witness. Is that okay? But when you study, I'm going to discover there are four apostles. The first apostles in scripture are the apostles of God. The apostles of God revealed God and the kingdom of God to the earth. Prior before time, when God began, all the people that actually God walked with before Jesus Christ, all of them were referred to apostles of God. They are messengers of God. Whether Adam, Abraham, everybody that walked with God is a messenger of God. God, who has undressed time and in the Bible and has spoken to our fathers by the prophet, all of them were actually messengers of God. They were apostles of God. Before Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ became the last apostle of God. Everybody that ever represented God before Jesus Christ is an apostle of God, a messenger of God. Then when you study scripture, you're going to see also the apostles of Jesus Christ. The apostles of Jesus Christ revealed Jesus. Those are the ones that Jesus Christ called. So Paul will write, say, uh, sorry, Peter will write, say, Peter, an apostle of the Lord Jesus. Is that true? Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus. So this one was called by Jesus. This one represents Jesus. So in the New Testament context, we are apostles of Jesus. Also, there is the apostle of men. The apostle of men are actually those who their God is their belly. They call themselves. Apostles of Jesus are called by Jesus. Apostles of God are called by God. Apostles of men are called by men. They call themselves. This one, their goal is their belly. They call themselves to enrich their belly. They may be arch apostle, arch bishop apostle, is still apostle of men. What, what they are interested in is in your pocket. They are not interested in empowering you. The goal of the fivefold ministry is to build a believer to come into maturity. This apostle of men, their goal is to build you to a point where you empower their pocket. So they don't care whether you are sleeping around in church. They don't care whether you are carnal. Just let the offering be much. So they enter our pocket. There are so many of such apostles of men. Called by men, not called by God. But there's another last set of apostles. We call them the apostles of Satan. The apostles of Satan, their goal is deception. According to Peter, Peter said there are many that came out from among us. Right now they are false. And because they are false, they want to introduce to you another gospel, another spirit, another Jesus. There are people today that are preaching from the pit, they are preaching from the pit of hell. They are revealing a God that is not divine. Their goal is to deceive people, to deceive you, and from deception bring into a civilization that is darkened and darkness. There are men that are apostles of the devil. They are actually representing the kingdom of darkness. Among the credentials of the apostle, before we pray, number one. Before God send you as a messenger, what the thing he will put upon you is a unique grace. A unique grace. Every apostle you see has a grace that defines his oppression. A unique grace upon him. Let me tell you. Everybody may be anointed, but there is a difference, distinction in grace. The grace of God upon the life of Peter make him to be an apostle to the Jews. But the grace of God upon the life of Paul make him to be an apostle to what? The Gentiles. Paul may find it very hard to preach to the Jews, but you see, Peter may find it very hard to also preach to the Gentiles. Their grace defines their operation. Is that true now? Every apostle, every messenger has a unique grace from God. Also, every messenger has a unique unction. The unction giving the ability to be able to lay hold of the possibility of God. The Bible says, ye have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. So you will need an unction from God to be able to know all things if you must represent God. 
also every genuine messenger in a revival movement is empowered not just only with emotion but with what with power the bible says, and ye shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you then you shall be my witness it then means that nobody can represent god till he what empowered with power so in a revival movement such as these men are giving power to be able to represent also part of the credential is wisdom you need wisdom wisdom for beauty also another credential is what utterance anytime god want to walk with a man he give him utterance the bible said do not worry about what you should say when you are brought before kings why because it will be given to you what you should say a man giving utterance is a man guided by the spirit paul moved everywhere he said pray for me that god should give me what utterance be able to speak answer because sometimes the challenge is utterance there are times when you can know so many things but you don't know how to say it what you need is utterance because utterance is to be able to have the language that you can speak that everybody can be blessed imagine as plenty as you are how am i sure that what i'm saying is blessing everybody i can't be sure it will take the spirit of utterance to take what i'm saying and god teaching you beyond what i'm saying right now as you are here you will be hearing god speak to you beyond what i'm saying that's what we call utterance it's not me doing it a spirit comes that grant that possibility that just because you are in this atmosphere something is talking to you beyond this it's part of the credential of an apostolic voice it's part of the credential of a witness so when people gather to beat you suddenly they hear something somebody will hear say don't beat him don't beat him others say kill him someone will say don't beat him the person hearing is all trans the lord is telling him what to do when jesus asked who the men say that i am all of them say you are this you are that peter look for all trans he said thou art the christ the son of the living god you now speak it the last thing that god empower a man with is what I call the anointing. Whether you like it or not, nobody going to represent God without being anointed. I spoke in the morning session, I told you, part of the finger of greatness is what? The anointing. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were sick. Joshua Solomon told us many years ago, he said, see, strive to be anointed. He said, the anointing does not make the difference. He said, the anointing is the difference. Anytime you see two people, what may distinguish them may just be the anointing. And that anointing is a very big difference. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. So God gave him power. God gave him also what? The Holy Ghost. So, but these things we are as a product of an anointing. My friends, you cannot represent God if you are not empowered and if you are not anointed. I have spoken to you about the need for us to actually be used by God. Revival is going to come. But at the end of revival, if you are not empowered with a unique grace, giving unction, giving utterance, giving power, giving the anointing, giving, giving the wisdom of God, it will not last for long. Every revival that lasts for long is because some of these things we are embedded upon the heart of man. And these men that were part of this system went out there and do mighty things. The Bible said when persecution hit them, Thomas went to India. This one went here. This one went there. But all of them went individually but with a full package. He said, when I send you, do you lack anything? No. While they went, there was an empowerment going with them. Rise up on your feet as we pray. Ask the Lord for an empowerment. An empowerment by the Spirit of the Lord. Ask God this and as you in this revival conference, oh God, empower me. And I may not go out just like that. No. No. Paul was speaking to Timothy. He said, Timothy, my beloved son. He said, No man that wanted entangled himself with civilian affairs. He doesn't entangle himself with so much matters of this life. That he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Ask the Lord for an empowerment. Paul, Jonathan. Ask the Lord for an empowerment. Pray. Don't be looking at me. Ask the Lord to empower you. I cannot go out like that. No. I cannot represent God like that. I need an empowerment from God. 
Oh God, empower me. Oh God, empower me. Release upon me a grace. Release upon me an auction. And authors and ability beyond men, what men cannot understand. Let the fire upon my life never go dry. Let the ointment never dry. Let it not dry. Let me be not. Let me not be lucky with oil. The Bible said the oil finished. The oil finished. The oil finished. Extra oil. Not to be extra oil, extra oil. Say, my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. As the Lord for an anointing a fresh oil. I cannot do it, God can do it for you. Ask, oh God, I will not pass light. I will not fall by the wayside. I will not begin in the spirit and end in the flesh like the Galatians do. I can't begin in the spirit and end in the flesh. No. Oh God, revive me. Oh God, revive me. Revive me. Set me on fire. Oh God, set me on fire. Set me on fire. Oh God, set me on fire. Pray. Are you not tired of your life the way it is? Are you not tired of your life the way it is? As the Lord to set you on fire, set you on fire. Set me on fire, set me on fire. Every morning begin and that's life. Everyone standing in your family and you must lie. You will not pass light. You will not pass light. I refuse to pass light. I refuse. I refuse to pass light. I refuse. I pass light. I refuse to fail. I refuse to pass light. I refuse. Nobody died 
Jesus of fire, you will not be the first. Oh God, revive me, oh God. Revive me, oh God. Oh God, 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 oh God,
Cherubims and seraphims come with coals. They begin to put coals upon the lips of men. They begin to empower people. And I realize I myself, as a minister of the Lord, need to be empowered. When do you think God come to upgrade men? When do you think God come to add on to men measure? Encounters are momentarily. Programs don't change people. It's only an encounter with God that changes men. You cannot count the number of programs you have attended, but one encounter is enough. <laughs>
Spirit, 